Okay, so uh, continuation from the main video about the uh, the computer repair. We're going to take a look at the um, the power brick here. Currently, this does not work. It's not outputting any voltage, um, and it's pretty dirty. So, what we're going to do? We're going to go ahead and attempt to repair this guy. I don't actually know that I can, um, but we're going to try anyway. It's I think it's going to be a lot of work, honestly. Um, there is no there are no screws on this power brick anywhere, so. Um, I'm thinking that this was ultrasonically welded, the plastic was, so we are going to have to take a hacksaw of this, and I know that's going to make a lot of people cringe, it makes me cringe too, um, but it doesn't work already, you know, even if it, even if we can't fix it, it's currently, and now it's just, right now it's just a paperweight, so, yeah, I don't really, I don't want to destroy it, I'm going to try my best not to, but, you know, at this, at this point in time, it's already broken, so we may as well, you know, do what we can to fix it. I know it's, you know, I know it's a piece of, uh, you know, computer history. I don't like destroying stuff like that, but in this case, I don't really have much of a choice uh, without making my own power supply, which you can very easily do if you watch my other video on how to make your own power supplies. But um, I don't know. I just want to try my hand at this, see if we can get it working. I don't know that we can, but we'll give it a go. Okay, so uh, real quickly, let's go over the tools that I'm going to be using to uh, fix the actual power brick. Um, so first off, I believe that there's going to be a fuse inside, um, that's, that's blown, so it'll probably be soldered in, so I'm going to be, probably going to be using a soldering iron, some solder, and some flux here to, uh, to install a new fuse. Um, I don't actually have any fuses, uh, well, I've got a few fuses, but probably not the kind that are inside the power bricks, so I'll probably have to go end up buying some, um, but I have to get inside to actually find the rating on it first, so, you know, there's that. Um, you might need a desoldering pump. I don't know. I'm just kind of including it in because I haven't actually opened it yet. I don't actually know if I need it, but you might need it. You might not. Kind of depends. Now, in order to actually get inside the case, I think I'm going to have to use a hacksaw. I don't see any screws on the case itself, so I'll probably end up having to use a hacksaw to actually cut into the sides of the case um, and break it open. I don't have a hacksaw here because it's so big, but you get the point. Um, now I do plan on, I don't, I don't plan on like scrapping the actual unit, I mean, I'm going to fix it. So I'm going to probably have to use a file to, um, to clean up the edges of the, ha of where the hacksaw, you know, left its mark. Probably use a file to, to clean up the plastic. And I'll, uh, end up using maybe some super glue or some Gorilla Glue to, to actually glue the two halves of the, the case back together. I'll probably have to end up using a vise to hold them overnight or something like that, but um, probably end up needing some glue if you want to do this. Um, I'll be using a multimeter to check uh, to check the voltages uh, when I get it fixed, just to make sure that it's actually working. And lastly, I'm going to try to uh, de yellow the plastic on this thing. Now the plastic's not really that bad; um, it is just a little bit yellow. So um, if you didn't want to de yellow it, you didn't necessarily you don't necessarily have to. But I'm going to be using this uh, this Salon Care. 40 volume cream stuff. I got it um, Sally's Beauty Supply. Again, that's just just if you want to, or maybe if you want to use some just some regular 3% hydrogen peroxide from Walmart, maybe you could utilize that. You're gonna have a couple options here, um, but overall, I think this is what I'm the base of what I'm gonna need to be able to fix the power supply. Because I am thinking there's a there's a blown fuse in it, and I just got to get inside um, to replace that fuse. Um, but yeah, uh, I believe this is everything I'm going to need to be able to do that. So I want to go ahead and um, get the hacksaw and very gently um, cut around the seam here on all sides to try to get this thing open. I'm thinking there's a fuse inside. Why wouldn't there be? Um, and hopefully just the fuse blown and, and, and we can replace that. So um, I will take this out to the vise and open it up and bring it back. All right, guys. So I'm back. Uh, I got this thing cut open with a hacksaw, and as you can see, yeah, there it is. So yeah, this thing was definitely ultrasonically welded together. Um, there's no way you get in here without a hacksaw. Um, so yeah, no no screws in this thing. Um, so I cleaned up the edges here on on both both cases. I just you know cleaned up the the extra crap plastic that was there. So I do want to try to glue this thing back together if we can get it fixed. Uh, I want to keep this thing as you know original as possible. Um, just uh, just because I like it so yeah just trying to make it look as neat as possible so 
Uh, anyway, we've got in here a transformer, a bridge rectifier, fuse, and a really massive cap and a really tiny cap down there, and that's it. Very simple, guys. This is just a simple linear power supply. Oh, and there's a, sorry, there's a cap here on the back of the transformer too, but anyway, um, let's, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that fuse and see what's going on with it. All right, so here's the fuse uh, in question. Uh, this is a, just a typical glass fuse, and I've actually never seen one like this. I don't know if you can tell, uh, but it's actually got, it looks like a, the fuse is wrapped around a piece of glass or some ceramic or something. Not really sure what's going on there. I've never seen one like that. It's pretty interesting. But anyway, let's go ahead and test continuity across the fuse and we'll see what we get. I am uh, guessing it's going to be dead, but we'll find out. And yep, bad fuse. That's what I thought. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and desolder this thing and we're gonna look at the rating on it and see if we can, uh, see if I can find a replacement somewhere. So the two, uh, the two points in question are the, this guy right here and then uh, this guy right here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and desolder those real quick. Okay, and that should do it. Fuse should come out now. All right, there we go, guys. So here's the fuse here. Uh, yeah, there's actually a, you know, a burn spot on the bottom of it, as you can see there. So it's, you know, it's definitely bad, obviously. We already checked it, but you know. Anyway, um, just looking at the specs here on it, and it says five amps, 250 volts. Uh, I definitely don't have anything that high, so I'll probably have to hit up um, the internet. So yeah. I'm gonna go order a fuse off of uh, off the internet if I can find one, and we'll continue. Okay, so it's a week later. I am back with some fuses here. So um, while I was researching online, I just kind of looked this up really quick. And, you know, this is the fuse that came out of it. Um, this is actually a what's called a slow slow blow fuse because um, there is a coil of wire uh, wound wound around a, a non-conductive or you know whatever thing in there. I guess it's ceramic. That just means it it's a slow blow fuse. It's um, it takes some time for it to, to burn out if there's something wrong. So I went ahead and ordered some of the same type. These are five amp, uh, 250 volt uh, slow blow fuses. Um, they just look a little bit different, but whatever. Um, I got this. Now I, I did get this the correct size. As you as you can see here, they are the correct size, basically. However, I forgot to account for the extra length on the two, um, the two tips here, or the, t the two little leads. So this, this fuse by itself doesn't quite fit in the circuit board. So that's my mistake. And also got some of these little clips. So uh, I'll show you how I'm, I'll show you how I'm going to attempt to fix this uh, since I'm missing a little bit of length here. So what I've done is I'm taking these clips they, they did have two prongs on on either side of this so I just clipped I clipped one side off and I just got you know one prong and that's going to go in the hole in the circuit board on either on either edge so I've done that to, to both of these so I'm going to go ahead and put these in real quick Okay, so that's kind of what, it looks, what it's going to look like. And when I set that fuse in there, it's not going to touch uh, the edges of these two holders. I'm just going to, it's going to kind of sit in the middle or maybe a little bit less. So what I'm going to do is when I, when I solder these two guys in and put the fuse in, um, I guess there is the risk of the fuse coming out if you, you know, if you actually drop the, the brick or something when we get it back together. So I'm going to just, when I get that, when I get this uh, clipped in there, I'm going to place a little bit of solder on either edge, um, just to make sure it doesn't it doesn't fall out. Okay, so I got those two the, the two clips soldered in. Also got the, the fuse in there. As you can see here, the fuse doesn't touch um, all the way back to the edge of the clip. So you know, just to to reduce the risk of the, the fuse falling out, just in case, I just soldered it in on, on both on both edges. So you know, it's that's it's pretty sturdy. That's not going anywhere. And you know, just to make sure that the fuse is still working, 
I want to get my uh, my multimeter out and I just want to check continuity across across the fuse here and we get the beep so we're all good to go there so um, before we actually you know uh, put the cover back on and everything I'm going to uh, plug this guy up and um, we'll test the output here on the uh, on the plug just to make sure that we're getting the 15 volts like we're supposed to be getting so I've just got a couple of wires stuck into the connector right here so um, this is a 15 volt supply so we should be reading um, this is a, since this is a linear supply we should be reading over 15 volts um, so yeah we'll just go ahead and test that really quick got the uh, red connection there or the positive connection there and negative and you can see we're reading uh, about 19 volts so that's uh, that's about average for a linear supply so uh, good we uh, we know that the uh, power supply is working now so we can go ahead and put it back together now okay so I'm uh, done cleaning up the case here I just treated it with that uh, peroxide treatment that I told you about in the the main Apple II teardown video so uh, here's the top of the case so I'm nice and pearly white now um, so we're just going ahead and reassemble this and we're going to secure, secure the case with some hot glue so we're going to just place the transformer in here and put these uh, grommets back in like this And everything looks to be in order there. Oh, there we go. Okay, so the transformer kind of slides down in a slot, so you know, in case you're following along, there you go. It doesn't just kind of lay in there; so it kind of slots in. But anyway. so um, now just put the case back on, and it'll it kind of slots in there as well. So. This way, yeah. So there we go. Looks, it's pretty good now. I mean, it's not glued or anything, but you know, once we get this glued and clamped, it should be okay. So yeah, not too, not too shabby. Just need to need to clamp it uh, once we glue it. So uh, here's my clamp here. And I'm gonna take my super glue and run a bead around this and then attach the case. So we're trying to make sure. Okay, so the case is gonna go on like that. Okay. And we'll go ahead and take my case, slot it on top. And then clamp this guy in. Okay, so got that clamped. We'll go ahead and let that dry and we'll uh, come back to it later. Okay, so it's the following day. I uh, took the power brick out of the vise, so it's all, uh, it's all glued together and ready to go. And I've just got the old computer uh, hooked up here. Uh, you know, of course it's broken, it's not gonna work. Uh, but it, it'll still power on. We still, should still get an image here. So, um, so yeah, I just want to test out the brick, make sure it's working. So if I power this on, we should get an image. And there you go. So, um, so that's it, guys. Uh, you know, in the rare event that you ever have to actually, you know, replace the fuse in your power brick for your 2C, you know, uh, now you know how to do it. So uh, I appreciate you watching the video. Thanks for watching, and uh, take care.